Okay. Um, first up, a reminder, we are doing the buy one, give one. If you go to adafruit.com slash blackgirlscode, when you buy one on Adafruit for yourself, we send one to Black Girls Code. It's that simple. You don't have to do anything else. If you're buying a Circuit Playground Express, that's what you can do. Um, but please don't email us and say, well, I bought one before, and what about this free one? Can I just send two? No, that's complicated, and that takes a bunch of time. Just donate to Black Girls Code directly if you want to do that. But if you want to buy a Circuit Playground Express and know that an identical one is sent to Black Girls Code, that's the way you do it, and that's what you do. Okay, first up. Okay, first up, we've got from Kittronic. They're a British maker of awesome micro bit accessories. We've got their kind of like inventor kit. Um, it's for the BBC micro bit, but uh, between you and me and everybody else watching, you can also use it with the Clue and other micro bit shaped boards. Um, so it comes with a booklet and all sorts of parts. Um, I'm going to. Going to part one? Yeah, sorry, because I have to get a list of the parts. So talk got, about it. Talk about it. All right, so you've got this breadboard. You got this cool breadboard holder. That's the thing in the middle. You've got a, a like adapter that you can plug in the micro bit. That's kind of on the mid right. A bunch of resistors to the right of that. Um, two sets of jumper cables. You've got uh, jumper cables with um, socket to header and then header to header. So it will show both being used. Uh, you've got uh, four different colors of LEDs with two of each, one RGB LED, four buttons, a piezo, a motor with a spinny wheel, a transistor, capacitor, light sensor, a terminal block, and a potentiometer. And so I thought I would just show an example of, of using this on the overhead. Um, so here I've got my micro bit plugged in. So this part um, bolts on. So you see this is the, the adapter board. The micro bit just slides right in. And then there's these headers that you can um, plug and unplug very easily. Oh, what is this? Come on. Lost my lock. Um, uh, so you can, you can plug in wires very easily, so there's no soldering required. And here's the breadboard attached. And for example, I just have a simple program that reads uh, this button and then blinks the LEDs either downwards or, if I press the button, upwards. But if you want to just do simple prototyping with projects, uh, you want to add sensors that aren't already on the micro bit, um, the I squared C sensors, or you want to do LEDs or whatnot, and or motor. Um, this is a great way to kind of learn electronics, and the booklet is really cool as well. I think I left the booklet. Yeah. Oh, right. Sorry, I was upstairs. But it is um, jam packed with projects uh, to use with Make Code, so it's really easy for beginners. Um, you ne don't even have to have coded before in your life. And if you'd like, you can also uh, use this with, like I said, your Adafruit Clue board because it's pen compatible. So you plug it in and then you can write Circuit Python code or Arduino code or um, to control LEDs and buttons as well using this nice little breadboard adapter. Okay. So that's the inventor kit. All right. Um, you know, we don't trick people we don't like doing that. What? We don't like fooling them. We don't even like surprises. April Fools. However. Today. This is a first. So this entire show and all of show and tell. Yeah. All of Ask an Engineer is running through a new product that we're selling. This is an HDMI video capture. Everybody on the Twitters, electronic Twitter is like, I got one of these for $20. And they're talking about it, and they're talking about it, and they're talking about it, and they're talking about it. But we have to do shows. So we actually and, try it. And so we're just like, if it works for Ask an Engineer, which we're on right now, then we know for sure. So we've been, we did just said, through caution to the wind. It's a good test, because like, what if it stopped working after 30 minutes? Test where the wind is, and you throw the caution at it. Yeah. And so we've been using this for all of our shows now. The one that's being used is over there, of course. This it's, one's it's, a different know. one. This one so I took it's using a uh, regular camera I always use, an yeah. HDMI camera, and it goes from HDMI to USB, and we use a really expensive one, normally. Normally. That's like that's this is the one I that I that our it's teams a couple use. Hundred bucks, right? It's more than that. It's really expensive, and it has you know stuff and everything. And I it's USB C, and it's really good. And look, if and you, I, you I need something like this, then yeah, this is fine. But by the way, I don't use most of these features, and like it's expensive. And so we have these now. Yeah, we saw these. Um, there was a bunch of Twitter threads and blog posts from folks, um, and so uh, we got some samples from we think the manufacturer of these. 
and we're gonna get them in stock because these are really handy um, especially if you have something like a Raspberry Pi and you want to do video capture from it or on it um, you know having HDMI input is really uh, usually expensive and annoying but this is a very low cost little dongle it has a single chip that kind of does everything for you a uh, little power adapter and otherwise it's just like it looks like HDMI in the USB out and it shows up as a video camera so you can use it in OBS um, you can use it in uh, you know any of your video recording software and of course I, I removed this but this is usually the heat sink and then um, yeah do you think I just kind of give up on? So I'll, I'll say this as a person who's been broadcasting yeah. on the internet for, I don't know, 20 years now, it seems. Yeah. Um, given the cost, I would just toss a bunch of these in bags, it, especially if, I'm, if I was going somewhere to do something. Um, turns out now you have a little bit more control over where you're at because you're like, well, am I, where am I going? What am I doing? Yeah. Um, but even right now, I'm always finding that I'm needing to put other HDMI sources into we use Wirecast, but other folks use OBS. So this just gives me more low cost options that are like this yeah, quality I, is I really good. I remember like we were doing a stream where it's like, oh, we wanted the overhead with HDMI, we wanted the camera which was HDMI, and yeah. then they wanted a Raspberry Pi, and you were like, I'm out of these multi hundred dollars. I'm out of these cards, yeah. So now, so, now we have an option. Anyways, um, so as you can tell, we like them. They're working. Yeah, they work really good. And if you want to, uh, if you this can, this is going can, through this right now. This if you can wait right a little bit, second. we'll get some in stock, and you can yeah. buy them from us. So this is what it looks like. Okay. Okay. Next up. Okay. So next up is. Uh, oh, we we skipped the pulse oximeter. Oh yeah. Do you want to just do this one and this one, or do you want to do the pulses? Let's do the pulse oximeter. Okay. We got pulse oximeters. We got pulse oximeters. Okay. Everybody needs these. Everybody wants these. Okay, yeah. but this is a special pulse oximeter. Um, so we this have plain pulse oximeters, but if you look carefully, you'll see on this one, there's a little Bluetooth logo. Ooh. That's how you and know it's special. what's all about that. This, so this is one of the few pulse oximeter boards um, that we see that's an okay, all-in-one. It's actually, like, you know, usable for, for uh, you know, if your doctor tells you to take your measurements, it's um, FDA-approved. And uh, it's got an OLED screen, and it's got Bluetooth out, and the Bluetooth protocol is documented by the company, which is really cool. They have a GitHub where the engineers published, you know, here's how you can um, make an app that talks to this, and uh, or if you want, you can, um, it's like Android and iOS. And it does have an app, but I'll, I'll say the app is like kind of not that interesting. Um, what I think is most interesting is that um, I can turn this on, and yeah. I can put my finger in it, and I can then, it takes a moment because it has to get valid data. But once it starts getting valid data, and you'll see it turns from invalid to valid. There you go. Oh. So it'll say your, your uh, blood oxygen, so it's 98. Your pulse, which is you know, about 60, 61 your pleth, which is another measurement, and then um, whether or not the reading is valid. So uh, as you saw, as, as it starts getting data, it, it has like a three second lag where it takes old data and it calculates um, the pulse and uh, blood oxygen based on that. And so if you want to have a wireless way of getting um, this kind of data, um, health data to a Bluetooth device or uh, to desktop Python using uh, BLEIO, our circuit Python library, um, this is one of the only pulse oximeters we've ever seen that can do it. And so we thought yeah. this was pretty cool. And this we thought we'd This is amazing. This is amazing tech. And you can do stuff with it yourself. And it works with CircuitPython. And um, if any of you have to take care of anyone, especially during COVID, um, one of the things that hospitals did was they sent folks home with pulse oximeters and says, hey, if it drops below like 90, then, then, then you're having some problems. Yeah. And so more people are familiar with these, but also it's a good health thing. Like... Straight up, um, you know, we've all had three months to cope with this thing. Um, we have a good warning. It's a good time to start to get healthy. And these yeah. tools can help you with yeah. it. These tools can help you, like, oh, like, what's my blood pressure? Like, what's my heart rate? What's the pulse click symmetry that I have? And then you can also do things about the code. And you can log it, you can store it, you can c communicate with it over Python. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's pretty neat. Um, okay. All right, and I think there's even a Node.js library somebody wrote, which is cool. All right. Okay. Back next to this up. thing. Next up, hardware. Um, okay, so we've got uh, the BNO055. It's actually one of our 
uh, popular breakouts. This is a sensor that has um, a 9 duff accelerometer gyroscope magnetometer in it, and it will also give you quaternion and Euler um, values output. And why is that handy? Well, you can use a microcontroller that's fairly high power, like Cortex M0 or M4, to perform calculations on the fly using uh, nine degree of freedom data to get orientation. However, it's kind of a pain. Um, you have to calibrate the sensor and you have to keep it calibrated. Um, you have to run the algorithm constantly. You have to tune the algorithm. It's, it's kind of like not a fun experience. I mean, you can do it and it's definitely less expensive. But if you have a simpler microcontroller, like an 8-bit AVR, or something where you don't want to um, spend your cycles because you don't want to have this, your microcontroller constantly on, spending cycles doing calculation, uh, the Vienna 055 is great for that. It basically just spits out um, you know, calibration, quaternion, Euler data for you. And we've had a breakout for a while, but now we have it in an adorable new STEMI QT format. And so here I show, you can uh, just plug in one of our cables, uh, you know, it's a power LED. Um, and so this is really nice because you have four mounting holes, you can attach it to whatever you want to measure and then connect power ground clock and data to any microcontroller. And here you can see uh, the XYZ um, orientation data. You know, if you stay still, it doesn't really move. And then as you, as you twist and move around, it tells you uh, this is the Euler angles. You can also get quaternion. And at the bottom, it has the uh, statistics or the, the status of the auto calibration. So as long as you see, you know, M3, it means that the magnetometer is calibrated. So these are um, really nice. They're all in one. Um, this uh, uses a Bosch sensor. And then I think Hillcrest bonded a Cortex M0 basically at, uh, at SAMD20 is inside of here. It's kind of cool. You could theoretically run circuit Python on this chip. Um, and it does the calculations and then uh, spits them out over I squared C. So uh, people really like these. I will say there's one downside. They have um, uh, I squared C clock stretching. So uh, on Raspberry Pi, you have to do a couple things to get them going. Um, but uh, they're very easy to use. And there's a library code support for just about any microcontroller. And the chip we're using on this Feather is uh, one of the slower ones we have. It's an at Mega, sorry, uh, yeah, at Mega 32U4. So it's an 8-bit microcontroller. We're not without a ton of RAM. It's driving the OLED while it's reading this data. It doesn't have to do the quaternion calculations on its own, thanks to this built-in orientation data calculator. So that's the B&O 055, now an adorable STEMI QT format for easy plug-and-play with any Python or microcontroller Arduino project. Okay. All right. Then the start of the show tonight, besides our community, our team, and new Lady Ada is. Dun, dun, dun. It's the ST Precision 9 Duff IMU Wing. This is the sister project to the sister product to the Featherwing that we had in the shop um, a couple weeks ago. That was the List 3 MDL magnetometer plus LSM 6D socks. Uh, this is the ISM 330, which is an even higher quality IMU sensor. So um, if you need to get that 9 DOF data uh, and you are willing to do the quaternion or Euler calculations or you really just need the data itself, um, the gyroscope in the ISM330 is like the quietest we've ever seen. It has like almost no drift. And um, the accelerometer is also like, you know, really like almost perfect, uh, as good as it's going to get. And so, um, when you need to do industrial or robotic uh, motion control or orientation calculation, uh, the ISM330 and the LIST3MDL are a great pair. You get nine degrees of freedom, you can use I2C, you can use SPI, uh, what have you. You put on a feathering to make it easy for you to use. Um, you got breakouts for all the extras as well. And then I've got the little demo of this. Um, in this case, I'm going to focus. So you could probably get closer. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. That's close. Yeah. Um, so here we've got quaternions and orientation Euler angles being calculated. And you can see, like, you know, usually um, the 
the heading or um, the roll or the pitch have a lot more noise in them. I'm actually lifting this. But, you know, when they're being set down... Um, yeah, the OLED is very bright. It's yeah, it's good. cool. Um, but when you set it down, it actually stays really stable thanks to the high quality of the uh, ISM yeah. 330. Okay. That's cool. So um, available in feathering format, it connects over I squared C, so it works with like pretty much everything. You will uh, need a uh, Cortex M0 or M4 if you or type chip if you want to do the on-chip orientation calculation. Um, but uh, for most people doing this kind of stuff, you have a pretty fast processor, and then you can tune the algorithm as necessary for your device, whether it's moving really fast, it's a robot, or it's moving nice and slowly, like a person. That's new product.